In 1967, a thrilling spy movie hit the screens, capturing hearts and minds. It's a story filled with action, surprises, and emotions that keep you hooked till the end. The film takes you to amazing places as the main character, played by Sean Connery, fights to save the world from danger. But what makes this movie special isn't just the excitement. It's also the unexpected twists and touching moments that make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even shed a tear. This movie isn't just a one-time watch. It's something you can revisit again and again, always finding something new to enjoy. So what makes it stand the test of time? Share your thoughts and memories with us in the comments below. And stay tuned for more interesting facts about this timeless classic. In the last movie with Sean Connery as the main character, James Bond faces a big challenge stopping a potential war between the United States and Russia. Bond gets help from friends like Tiger Tanaka and Akia. Together, they go through a lot of action and excitement. In the end, Bond faces off against the famous bad guy, Blofeld. Even though Connery might not have been very interested in the role anymore, the movie is still fun to watch. But some people might not like what happens to certain characters. Overall, it's a thrilling Bond adventure that both old fans and new ones will enjoy. Built in 1967 for one pound million, the volcanic interior set in the movie would cost around 17,250,000 £17, pound adjusted for UK inflation in 2017. Additional expenses might be incurred due to later construction and safety regulations. Charles Gray, who debuted on stage in 1952 as Charles the Wrestler in As You Like It, changed his forename to avoid confusion with another actor named Donald Gray. In the Ama fishing village scenes, 100 out of the 400 inhabitants of the southern village of Akaim served as extras. These details shed light on the financial and casting aspects of the film, providing a glimpse into the efforts and considerations made during the production. In the movie, the main James Bond girl, portrayed by Mai Hama, doesn't make an appearance until one hour and 19 minutes into the nearly two-hour film. Teru Shimada, who played Mr. Osato, was initially working as a caretaker when he was cast in the role. Due to illness during filming, Mai Hama, known as Kissy Suzuki, was doubled in a diving scene by Dean Salento, Sean Connery's wife at the time. Amidst the grandeur of Osato's workplace, the tough guy Bond faces off with was played by Sam Ohm Wrestler, the High Chief Peter Fanny Mavia, who happens to be Dwayne Johnson's grandfather. His strong presence really brought energy to the scene, showing off both his physical strength and dramatic skills. Donald Pleasance, a well-known actor, put three weeks into his part in the movie, giving it his usual intensity and depth. In the beautiful landscapes of western Japan, Tanaka's ninja training spot sat close to Haimji Castle. This old place, going way back to 1A333, made a great setting for the sneaky moves and old customs shown in the movie. The tall castle, a sign of the area's long history, was full of stories from the past and the memory of its noble owners. As Bond moved through this world of danger and adventure, the classic charm of Haimji Castle made his daring deeds feel real. In the 1967 movie You Only Live Twice, the iconic Atajaro Little Nelly was named after music hall star Nelly Wallace, whose surname bears similarity to its inventor. Additionally, the scene depicting the attempted assassination of Bond by a ninja assassin draws inspiration from a real-life incident in 16th century Japan, where an Iga ninja failed to assassinate warlord Oda Nobunaga after he awakened. Notably, the royal world premiere of You Only Live Twice took place on June 12, 1967, at the Odeon Theatre in London's Leicester Square. Attended by Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, the gala charity premiere benefit, sponsored by the Variety Club of Great Britain, supported two charities, the YMCA and the Imperial Cancer Research Fund. In the aftermath of the movie, Tanaka found peace by becoming a spiritual leader in Japan. He used his life experiences to guide others. Unfortunately, Bernard Lee, who played him, couldn't return for the next movie because he passed away unexpectedly. To respect his memory, the script was adjusted to explain M's absence as Leaf. This change honored Lee and kept the story consistent. Also, Richard Gradon, a stuntman, played a Russian cosmonaut, showing his versatility. His role added depth to the movie's story, making it more engaging. These stories show how everyone involved, both on and off screen, made the film special. It's a reminder of the talent and dedication behind the scenes of classic movies, showing how they've stayed memorable over time. In the 1967 movie You Only Live Twice, Akiko Wakabayashi and her Japanese co-star Maihama faced language barriers during production. To overcome this, they were sent to live separately with English-speaking families in England for three months. 
Akiko learned English, while Mai's voice was dubbed by Nikki Vanderzil as she struggled with the language. Despite being a significant character, Kisi Suzuki's name is never mentioned on screen, and Eki's last name remains unknown, making them unique among major Bond characters. Additionally, in the German dubbed version of the film, the organization SPECTRI is referred to by that name for the first time. It was previously named differently in earlier Bond films. In the making of the movie, the Japanese government insisted on Japanese actresses for key roles. Maihama, cast as Kissy Suzuki, faced a language barrier, prompting producers to consider recasting. Hama's threat of self-harm led to her continuation, despite eventual dubbing. Notably, the film retained its entirety without BBFC cuts. The movie showcased an array of gadgets, including weapons like a cigarette dart rocket and a Walder PPK with attachable silencer. Additionally, the film featured an electromagnet attached to a helicopter, flash paper, underwater breathing units, and other inventive tools. In a gesture of courtesy, Bond accepts a stirred martini, breaking his shaken tradition. It's a playful nod by the producers. The next Bond film was meant to be on Her Majesty's Secret Service. However, chilly weather forced a change of plans. You Only Live Twice was chosen instead. Roald Dahl, known for his children's books, had little screenplay experience except for an unfinished project. The Bells of Hell go ting-a-ling-a-ling -a -a suffered the same fate due to the weather closing early. In the 1967 film, a character played by Sean Connery offers a woman named Helga Brandt a substantial sum of money. In today's money, that amount would be equivalent to two seven million dollars. Another actress in the same year turned down the role of Helga, mentioning that she believed Bond movies were better suited for actresses who fit a certain physical description rather than those with acting skills. Instead, she expressed a preference for working in a different profession. Maihama made history by becoming the first non-Caucasian actress to play the main female lead in a James Bond film, breaking the pattern set by previous actresses in the series. These changes in the cast and financial offers shed light on the decisions made during the film's production. Lois Maxwell, known for her role as Moneypenny, appeared in six films alongside Jeffrey Keen, including this one. The Volcano Set, a marvel of its time, was the largest interior set in Europe during filming, boasting impressive features like a working monorail and a towering rocket. Charles Gray, who portrayed Henderson, later played Blofeld in Diamonds Are Forever, while Donald Pleasance, also known for his portrayal of Blofeld, starred opposite Gray in The Night of the Generals. These connections add layers to the Bond universe, showcasing the interwoven nature of its characters and actors.